I want to talk to you guys about the fate of our democracy in Sierra Leone. All right. That is what I want to talk to you guys about. And um, I'm going to take my time very slow, speak African English, you know, so that all of us would understand. Because some of these things that we are saying, um, a lot of other African countries would benefit from it. Okay. So um, just speaking in Creole really does not help as much. Right. So um, uh, permit me to at least, you know, uh, speak some English, a little bit of English. Right. But I want to talk about the fate of democracy. Where are we going? You see, um, however, looking at what is happening in Sierra Leone today, I want you guys to understand this. We cannot just say, okay, let's focus on what is happening now. We have to go back, you know, because uh, we always have to trace our steps. There is this adage, you know, that uh, uh, my brother likes, you know, when he says, when you trip and fall, don't look where you fell. Go and see what actually caused you to trip first in the first place, right? You know, once you can figure out what caused you to trip in the first place, then you can figure out why you fell. And then you'll fix it and make sure you don't fall again or maybe prevent somebody else falling in the same place where you fell. What did I mean, Pancreo? You say, where you buck your foot? Now for Lukusa, you buck your foot, not Lukusa, you for them, right? That's in a local Creole, right? But um, we cannot go and just focus on what is happening now. We, we have to, to, for us to be able to evaluate what is actually happening today, the destruction that Manabio and the SLPP has brought to our democracy, we have to go way back in the past five years of the SLPP. I'm not going to take you too far. I just want you guys to stay focused on 2018 to this day, all right, um, where we're at. However, just for historical perspective, I want to take you guys to 1964 to 67. 1964 to 67 is very important because that was what caused the rebel war in the first place. Or, if anything, that's how they justified the rebel war, the 1991 rebel war that ended in 2002, right? So it's very important. And by the way, guys, thank you. I know the sound is good now. It should be good now. I was experimenting with some, you know, uh, uh, gadgets. So it's kind of it messed, me, messed me up a little bit, but the sound should be good now. But that is why, that is what caused, that is what they used to justify their actions for them to bring the rebel war and say we were, they were fighting against oppression, suppression, you know, corruption, no free speech, no rights to protest, right? This was why the people like the Ali Kabaz justified going to the Mataba in Libya, right, to start the revolution in Sierra Leone. This is all evidence-based, right? You guys have seen the videos, except... If you've not been following what is happening, then you've not seen the video of Charles Taylor in, at the International Criminal Court when he was being prosecuted, when he mentioned that the only person that he remembers was Ali Kaba at the Mataba in Libya. He did not remember Foris Ankor or seen Foris Ankor there because you have to have a certain level of caliber to be at the Mataba in Libya. So Charles Taylor at, the, at his prosecutions at the, United, uh, the International Criminal Court, The Hague, mentioned Ali Kaba, but that's what they used to justify the 1991 rebel war. They said oppression, suppression, depression, you know, corruption, no rights to free speech, no rights to protest, this and that. That was the justification they used to bring the rebel war, where who suffered? Only the poor people suffered, right? No politician really suffered as much there. You know, poor people got their hands chopped off, pregnant women got their bellies split and open. You know, all of that stuff, this happened in Sierra Leone, right? Very terrible, very terrible past, very terrible history. We know all of these facts. We know all, all about this. So that is the only thing I would say about 1964 to 67. And you guys know about the fact that Albert Magai lost the elections. Sheka Stevens came. But before Sheka Stevens took over power, there were three coups. Three coups. The first one was initiated by Inga Norman and uh, 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 Brigadier Lansana. You all know these. I hope you guys know this. I don't want to go into all of that. I hope you know this history because the thing that is killing Sierra Leone today is the fact that people don't pay attention to history. And until we pay attention to history, we will not be able to forge a future that is going to be bright and beautiful. But I want to talk about the fate of our democracy in Sierra Leone. You see, and this goes to, um, I want to thank, first of all, Ambassador David Reimer for making uh, you know, um, a statement very clear. Of course, when David Reimer, the ambassador of, Amer of uh, you know, uh, the United States in Sierra Leone, when he speaks, he speaks the language of the State Department. It speaks the language of President Joe Biden. So we all know President Joe Biden is very big on preserving democracy. 
you know, we've seen how the institutions in America right now, this very moment, are working overnight and over time to fix democracy, to restore confidence. That's the biggest thing, right? Confidence in America's democratic, democratic, uh, democratic institutions or restoring confidence in America's democracy. That is very big. That's the agenda of uh, President Joe Biden. And this goes back to the democracy summit that he organized back in 2020 when he took over power. You know, um, uh, to uh, he invited all the other heads of state, but did not invite, you know, um, uh, uh, Julius Marabio. You guys know about the fact that not only I'm on social media, on WhatsApp or Facebook or Twitter, but also, you know, I've been writing letters. I have editorials on newspapers, articles across the world. I've written all these articles to explain what is actually happening in Sierra Leone. You know, and um, I wrote a letter to the White House directly to President Joe Biden. They responded and I told him about what is actually happening, how democracy is backsliding in Sierra Leone. All of these are things that we do. So I'm not only in the forefront, but I'm also in the back end. I'm writing these letters. I'm actually participating, making sure that we preserve democracy in my own little way that I can. You know, given the fact that I am a senior enlisted leader within the United States, within, between the United, you know, within the United States, uh, you know, uh, first structure. I mean, you guys would understand what I'm saying here. But I want to commend Ambassador David Reimer for making, you know, the statements of the State Department very clear. Because when he speaks, he speaks for the State Department. He's not speaking because he wants to speak. It is what the position of the State Department, the position of the U.S. government, was what Ambassador David Reimer spoke about when he mentioned in the interview on 98.1, when he said that they've not recognized uh, Marabi as the president. And that is where, that, for me, that is, that is sufficient. The only thing I had, the only little problem that I had was the fact that he was calling for, you know, a, a, a dialogue, you know, a, a participation of the opposition in this, in this uh, you know, particular dispensation. And that is what we are against because we cannot condone, you know, um, uh, 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 this level of roguery, this level of thievery, you know, for it to uh, go on. Um, in front of our eyes, broad daylight. These guys robbed the people of Sierra Leone, the ECSL, Mohamed Kanao, we call it, you know, um, uh, uh, President B.O., because they all know the plan. They know what they're doing. So we don't have a legitimate government in Sierra Leone at this particular point in time. And we can state that emphatically, right, until the disaggregated data is produced from polling station at district level and returned by returning officers. Uh, until we have that data, we're not going anywhere. We know what we have right now is a sham. It is not a democracy. We don't have a democratic government. That ended on July 4th. That was it. Because um, the voices of the people matters in elections. So what is the fate of democracy? I've given you guys a little bit of a backdrop. I've told you about Ambassador David Reimer's statement that he made, which, of course, is speaking on behalf of the State Department. He's not speaking for himself. And in as much as we're not happy with the fact that he's calling for collaboration, he's calling for, you know, the other opposition to participate in parliament and this and that. No, in, in, in governance. We don't want nobody to participate in governance. What we are calling for is for President Bio to step aside and we can have an interim government take over the affairs of Sierra Leone at this particular point in time and then get a proper, proper investigations into the results and then let the proper results be announced and then we'll take it from there we can restore a properly constituted democratic government. That is what we want. President Bio should step aside. We don't have a democracy right now. He's not a legitimate president of Sierra Leone until, until we certify every disaggregated, you know, uh, data from polling station, every polling station in Sierra Leone. I'm, I'm making these points clear because I want you guys to understand what is at stake for our democracy. But as, as of this moment, we don't have a democracy in Sierra Leone. It is not a legitimate government. It, has, it bears no legitimacy. I'm saying this because I want the ECOWAS, the African Union, you know, the European Union, which, of course, the European Union has been doing a fantastic work. You know, Ambassador Mula, you know, um, uh, uh, Miss Lisa Chesney of the European Union. You guys have been phenomenal preserving democracy. And um, I'm not going to go further without mentioning the role of the futile parliament that we had for five years that supervised and watched you know, the SLPP carry on with all kinds of policies that have led us to this disarray that we have today. Um, when you look at the parliament of five years, when you take the opposition, the biggest opposition party in parliament, and first of all, let me just let you all know, section 105 of the 1991 constitution. By the way, I hope you've downloaded the constitution and you're reading the constitution. It makes it very clear. It says that parliament is the supreme legislative authority. So, therefore, it saddens me when I see Africans, Sierra Leoneans, 
they are coming here and telling you that, oh, leave the parliament alone. What can the parliament do? The parliament cannot do anything. Leave them. You don't like them. You hate them. You know, if, I, I feel very terrible. I feel very sad for these people because, again, it goes to everything I've been saying when it comes to civic responsibilities, civic education. Civic education is very important, and civic education is the cause of the demise of our democracy in Sierra Leone. Lack of civic education is why Sierra Leoneans don't know. A lot of them don't know that they have a responsibility to hold their leaders accountable. It is because of lack of civic education. Because when civilized societies, this part of the world that we find ourselves in, America, Europe, and all these countries within European spectra, you see how the citizens challenge governments, right? They do it because they are civically educated. And if, you, if they allow their leaders or their representatives to go easy, you know, and just be, you know, uh, 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 just strolling by and not holding them accountable, I'm telling you, they will not be as tough as they are with their ruling governments of the day. But because the society is so educated and informed in this part of the world we find ourselves, the citizens actually hold their leaders account. You know, they hold their leaders accountable. They tell them what they want, they tell them what to do, and the leaders have to listen to these people because you know why? If they don't listen to them, they would not earn their votes in the next coming elections. But in Sierra Leone today, what we have, we have a population that is not educated as much, as much. civic education, and of course, you know, conventional education as well is a very big problem in the society that we have. So what is happening is because our society, uh, a bulk of the percentage of the population, a large chunk of the population is not educated enough to where they can hold these leaders accountable. These leaders in Sierra Leone, particularly in parliament, they found a way to just use a few miscreants in society, uh, individuals that have no clue, ignorant souls, that have no idea of what true governance is. They've used them, you know, within a political spectra to serve as their voices. Because these parliamentarians, especially you talk about the leaders of the opposition within the biggest opposition, these guys have deliberately, de you know, derelicted their duty, you know, um, abandoned their jobs and used folks within the social media, idiots, illiterates, you know, stack illiterates, to use them within social media to lie to the people and tell them all kinds of beautiful things that they feel like the people should hear you know, exculpating them from their, their actual responsibilities and duties to hold the SLPP government accountable for five years. You guys, you saw all the laws that Madabio passed in Parliament was passed with the help of these parliamentarians. We look at the public elections laws. The one that actually, you know, uh, Mohamed Kenai Wikona is using today to say is justified in everything that he's done. It was passed in Parliament. No member of Parliament came out here and said, oh, no, we, don't, we, we did not support this, right? We've seen this same Marabio during the census. He said he had unprecedented support from members of Parliament. To this day, no member of Parliament came out here and said, I'm not part of this. You see, so our democracy died in 2018 up until this point. So don't just look at what is happening now and say, oh, we're going to start from here. No, you have to go back and understand that the parliament that we had, the opposition, especially the opposition leader of APC, Honorable Chayno Majuba, Honorable Cherry Koko, this guy sat there and watched the SLPP at a time when he should have stood up and said, you know what, enough is enough. But you know what they said? They said, oh, we want peace in the country. We want peace. If we call our people out, the SLPP is going to kill them. I cannot lead a protest because if I lead a protest as the opposition leader, they would beat me up. They would lock me up. So this man sat there for five years. You negotiated with the government. That did not work. This man took no interviews with BBC, not with VOA, not with Al Jazeera. No interview across the world, CNN, to bring out the issues that are actually affecting Sierra Leoneans. Honorable China Majuba of the APC party sat in parliament for five years, did not give one public interview. I want you guys to tell me if that is okay, if that is normal, if that is okay in your, in your eyes. This was how democracy died. And this is why Marabio is doing what he's doing today. Naim make Marabio and ECSL take the elections, then take them physically. You know why? Because these guys in the opposition, especially this guy, he has a target now for 2028. His eyes are set on 2028. 2028 now is you know what let we allow Marabio let it go. That is what these guys were doing. How can you support the registration process? When I all see them, Sierra Leone saw that the registration process for the very first time in the history of Sierra Leone it was split for 15 days, 15 days. Even in 1996, when we had the war going on, 
when we used the proportional representation system the very first time in 1996, we had to register people for 30 days consecutively. It was not split up. We saw Honorable Chair of Majuba of the APC party, the biggest opposition party in Sierra Leone, that had constitutional powers. So stop that nonsense. We, we're not going to talk about them um, and just hold Marabio only as the culprit there, as the guilty one. We cause all this. Now, because for five years, people that were supposed to do their jobs did not do their jobs. That is why we're here today. But this is what has happened. With what happened so in these elections in 2023, what it has done is to um, delegitimize the democratic process in Sierra Leone. And that is why we should not allow this to settle. We're not, we, under no circumstances, this should not settle. You know, now I don't hear the ECOWAS people and the Euro African Union and all these uh, you know, institutions condemning the actions of this bill. I don't hear ECOWAS coming out here, putting out a strong statement and saying, hey, this man has to step aside until, you know, the, the votes are counted properly and then we'll restore democracy and a democratic government in Sierra Leone. We don't hear these people coming here and complaining about all of this stuff now, right? We've seen what is happening across, you know, the West African region and across the world with the decline of democracy. And that is why it's very important for us as Sierra Leoneans to ensure that we hold these guys accountable. We ensure what is happening in Sierra Leone today does not stand. Under no circumstances, we should not let it stand. We have a responsibility because if this happens today in 2023, there is no telling me that it would not happen again in future elections to come. Every other election, it is not going to be the will of the people. It is not going to be the voices of the people. It is just going to be a few that are going to decide. How can we let a society decline to that level? And this is why it's important for the State Department, it is important for the American ambassadors, you know, Ambassador David Reimer, the European Union, every institution, you know, across the world, every organization across the world that believes in democracy to stand up at this particular point in time and not just make statements, but ensure and ask di directly what we want. We want this guy to step aside. He is not the president of Sierra Leone. Let him step aside. Let us have an in-scheme government. Take care of the issues of Sierra Leone at this particular point in time until we have a proper count in the actual winner of the elections of June 24th. Of June 24th, 2023 is announced. Until then, we don't have a democracy. Because for people like myself who believe in democracy, we want to have a situation where the people vote and the votes reflect, the, the results reflect the votes of the people. That is the essence of democracy. Because democracy itself is the power of the people for the people and by the people. So how can we nurture a situation where the voices of the people does not matter? It's going to get to a point where people will not be, the citizens will not be energized to even come out of vote. The citizens will just lose interest in the system itself and say, you know what? Why would I even go and vote if my vote is not going to be counted? And that is why I say again to the State Department, I say again to Ambassador David Reimer, I say again to, you know, um, the, the, the ECOWAS, to European Union and every institution that is responsible to monitor democracies across the world, every organization that is responsible to ensure that we have proper democracy, you know, across the world, they have to pay attention to what is happening in Sierra Leone right now. Because what is happening in Sierra Leone is a travesty, is a disgrace to democracy, and we should not let it stand. We should not allow this to stand under no circumstances. Because if it stands today, it means it can be done tomorrow. And what is it, what's going to happen? Let's go back again. Sierra Leone is a classic example of a country that has actually had a rebel war. And that is why I don't get this, why people don't see this. We go back and see what caused the 1991 rebel war, like I said earlier. It is because of actions like these. It's going to nurture, it's going to fester. And then at some point, people are going to bounce back. Because you can only push us to the walls to, uh, to so much until we have to bounce back. And the citizens of every country, they see this blatancy, this disrespect for their voices. And at some point, they're going to, they're going to stand up. And this is not only for the governments in power. I'm talking to opposition figures as well. Citizens in opposition as well. You have a responsibility to hold your leaders accountable. Like I was saying earlier, when you have members of parliament that are in opposition, that are responsible for, to protect your democracy, you have to hold them accountable. Don't, brand, don't blindly support them. Don't give them your loyalty blindly just because they belong to your political party. If we have to preserve democracy, your opposition leaders also have a responsibility. They have a, a, a job to do in, 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 in preserving the dictates of democracy. But it's you as a citizen, you are responsible to hold them accountable to ensure that they do their jobs in holding these governments accountable. Every government wants to be unchecked. If you check every government, they want to be unchecked. They would rather go unchecked. But we have a democracy for a reason because, again, you have the opposition. You have other people that would have a divergent view. They would have a different viewpoint than what you think that would say, no, this will resist you. 
That is what is happening. America is preserving its democracy today. Look at what Trump is going through. Because he kept pushing the lie about the elections being rigged, right? How the elections is rigged, the elections is rigged. It has destroyed democracy in America. So what the responsibility of the institutions in America is to preserve democracy. And that is what they are doing right now. They are pushing for prosecutions. They are pushing for charges. Because they know if they don't do that, it would, it would bring a total you know, um, destruction to the institutions of democracy in America. And this is why we have to ask ourselves a question in Sierra Leone. What is the fate of our democracy in Sierra Leone? Is this what we want? What we want? Is this how we want future elections to be conducted? Where the electoral commissioner can just tribalically, you know, uh, partisanly, just go ahead and say, hey, this is the outcome of the results? And, and, and totally disregard the voices of the people, totally disregard the votes of the people? Is that what we want in a democracy? So until every disaggregated data is shared from polling station to polling station in Sierra Leone, and we have an independent investigation committee set up that does not include these guys, we can have people that we can trust within Sierra Leone. Come on, guys, we should be able to count our elections ourselves. We should be able to count our election results ourselves. Why should we be getting, trying to get folks from the international community or anywhere else in the world to come? America is not asking Sierra Leoneans to go and count, to, to come and count the elections, you know, uh, uh, results in America. When are we going to mature? 62 years or 63 years after independence up till this point? We cannot hold elections and count our elections, count our results? Simple elections? Count the votes? Let the people say yes? What the people say is what shows up in the results? We cannot do that to this point? We have to have elections where, you know, we, we have to be fighting. A, a two, three months later, we're still quarreling about that. Because there was no transparency in the outcomes of the results. What a shame. It is disgraceful for democracy. And with everything we've been through as a nation, everything Sierra Leoneans have gone through as a nation, it is a shame. That is why we should not let this land, we should not allow this travesty to, to go on. And I'm calling on every Sierra Leonean, but don't be fooled. I saw a video of some guys in the diaspora. I saw this bobo, you know, this guy who's based in Holland who has been deceiving Sierra Leoneans for five years. Well, we've been speaking up and saying, hey, members of parliament, they have to stand up, do their jobs. This bobo, they come now, they can't discount what we've been saying. This bobo, see, don't, 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 don't cause the death of so many Sierra Leoneans. Them. This bobo, they cause people, about the all day. I see a video of some innocent Sierra Leoneans somewhere in Europe. I don't even know where that is. I just saw a skipper of the video. Innocent people, some of these Sierra Leoneans don't even know what was going on. Over the past five years, a lot of them nobody pay attention. Some of them were paying attention. Some of them no say all they know they no say this bobo cost my mikos. Some of them don't know that this bobo be they even talk say I like na Fatima Biobi neck commissioner and they announce say Madabi don't lost the elections. They, you know they, they, all kind of nonsense talk. But this bobo now I see that they get our money. Hey, you guys in the diaspora, as innocent as you are, all we, I don't say all we get for your relator on a cry cry ala ala. Oh, we stolen our money. They, they took our money and nothing came out of that. This same Bobo now we tell say Honorable China Majuba of the APC party went to ECOWAS Parliament at a time when everybody was looking for him. They were looking for Honorable China Majuba to defend the people of Sierra Leone, the citizens that lost their lives in August during August 10th, the police officers that lost their lives during August 10th. The ECOWAS parliamentarians, Liberia, Gambia, they were calling for Honorable China Majuba to speak for Sierra Leone. Honorable China Majuba disappeared and left Lagos, Nigeria. And the next thing we hear, it was at Parliament trying to approve Judge Fisher, Adrian Fisher. Adrian Fisher, who actually disassembled the APC as a political party, caused, you know, so much trouble for the APC. There was no point in dissolving the executive at the time. All they should have done was let the executive take the APC party to an election. But that is a conversation for another day. This bobo has been protecting these members of Parliament. The ones that should actually take this fight to the, the, the ECOWAS Parliament or the ECOWAS Court, the African Union Court. This bobo was defending these members of Parliament. Up until this day, he could not call out Honorable Chairman Majuba for doing what he did when he disappeared at the ECOWAS Parliament, a place where he was supposed to speak up on behalf of Sierra Leoneans. But this bobo, I see when I didn't in Europe, when they go to Sudan, when they allow, when they go mix on herself with this bobo, when they go mix on herself with this kind of a, you know, filthy personality. This kind of a dirty, dirty personality, some of una, una no, no. But if you don't know, you know now. I'm telling you now. Stop mixing yourself with this bobo. There is no way any of you guys are very intelligent people for they mix on herself with this bobo. Like what I see in that video, I feel very sad for una. It's very pathetic. It's very, it's very terrible that you guys, after all these years, you've not been following on what happened. 
This is Bobo will even encourage. Call them, say, can we platform left the Mamikos? Come, let we can engage and talk to these guys. We can get the minds and hearts of the people. This is Bobo Deepa Mamikos. Una sit down. We don't follow anything where they go on at the politics. Some of you guys don't know. Una innocent. But some of you that are known, I didn't tell. Una they go make with decent people. They go mix with this Bobo in Europe. They go sit down with her. This Bobo, they go sit down with her. Filthy idiots. Una get nothing for do. Don't lie and deceive with people like, over this past five years. They fed the wrong fight. They actually uh, support and help Madabio for letting do it and do something like it today. Because if we all be done steady and say, members of parliament will so now hold these guys accountable. They don't stop this foolishness. When they register people, the registration period, we saw them. This bubble, they lie. What they tell people, they say, Una call members of parliament and protect people and for register. This bubble, they tell people, they say, I like nobody, not, I like nobody, no vote. We are saying to you guys, when I share this part of this clip with these guys in the diaspora, there is no way any of them for affiliate. There is no way they should affiliate themselves with this useless bubble. But with democracy delicate today, it is dead because these members of parliament, they decided to say, instead of them doing their jobs, they use the social media. They use uh, ill-motivated individuals. Them. They use people and we're thirsty. We want to get affiliations to political power. They say if one for look and see, say we don't tie with the diaspora, I want for go back home, let me say go be part of the thievery, part of the corruption. Then they say go thief and make a living for themselves. These members of parliament use these people here yeah, for letting destroy with democracy like it today and give matter beyond this kind of a power we get to over we country at this particular point in time. So the fate of our democracy was in the hands of our members of parliament. They were supposed to protect us. They were supposed to defend and uphold our democracy. They were supposed to stand in front of the people. At a time when they killed people at McKinney, Parimaru Prison Massacre, Tonkolimba, Losar, all of these places, people lost their lives senselessly. These members of parliament did not do anything about it. To this day, Honorable Chair of Majuba of the APC, we get the biggest opposition at parliament. We don't count the UK, they all these other useless ones. Them Chair of Majuba. With constitution inside the constitution, section 86, subsection 2. I will now turn to the constitution. Section 86, subsection 2 makes it very clear. See, if they get 20% of members of parliament for rights to the speaker and ask for any debate at any point in time, the speaker shall within 14 days for respond and answer to that debate. For he shall this man not ever use that part of the constitution. For saying, you know what, I'm going to demand for Auditor General, let we, let we Auditor General give, give uh, you know, uh, let we, we, we debate the Auditor General report. Only which I don't imagine back could not use Section 86 too. For then debate the Auditor's report. It's sit on back in the Parliament still and fire the Auditor General. It could not stand up and do anything on behalf of that woman. Could not take an interview in the international world. This man sit on and watch five years SLPP, then they destroy with democracy. Take to Usa with like today. At the same time, this useless bubble will protect them, will guide them, will cover them, will lie for with people. Left. But we will tell the people of Sierra Leone, say, this man gets a responsibility. They say, we'll get by that. They say, we don't like the man. Who are they in the business of, of lek lek? Now, lek lek, we don't come the politics. We don't have to come lek lek. 63 years, we don't get electricity today. We don't get clean drinking water. We have healthcare poor. We don't can't talk about lek lek. We don't have lek lek now with the pan. Now, big fool, you see, this is the thing we want to talk about civic education. Because anybody who is sensible local can tell me for say I like politician or I hate politician. I don't have to like a politician, I don't have to hate a politician. And they, they will tell you, say, oh, but no, because you're not in a company, not to a company. No, not to rank. Now, because I better pass you. Useless idiots. This not get, this, some of these are not even getting for it. And they talk the nonsense there. We're the telling people, they say, hold these guys accountable. It is their responsibility to protect the democracy. Let us protect this democracy also. These are the things we don't say for five years. That is why we wish I would so delicate today. The fate of our democracy is dead. Not because Manabio, they are power do more. Now because we allow them, um, the leaders that we will get, which they did, for stand up against Manabio, they allow this nonsense for participate, for go on. They say, hey, we want to prevent peace. We don't want war again. We come up and brutal rebel war. But they are taking us back down that path. Because when these things here, over time, it build up, it build up, it build up. What's happening? They will get a brutal rebel war in 1991. They say they allow we for, for protest, they allow we for talk, they allow we, you know, corruption in the country, all kinds of things, uh, suppression, oppression, and we could get a brutal rebel war. Then we sit on back, we tolerate this again within the past five years of SLPP. These guys, the APC, the leader of the opposition, sit on day. How much members of parliament APC get? About 58, even though they removed 10. About 58 members of parliament. They get more than 40% in the parliament, 39.9, almost 40%. They might not use section 86.2 at all under no circumstances where the speaker shall. We sit up, we allow SLPP for destroy with democracy. It is not by Marabi and one, one, one Greno. When I see the videos them across the, uh, the parts of West Africa or, or, or the world, when opposition leaders then they stand up and speak up. 
and defend democracy. We are celebrate, we are share. But we come to salon, we watch, we are call it. We are saying, "We are left out. We are not any politician now. We are not any member of parliament. You fancy this member of parliament? You see, you see the level of sicko fancy that is destroying our country. We are not there for leg posse. Why anybody for come for leg leg? I don't want nobody like me. Don't no like me. If I do what I supposed for do, okay, that's it. Maybe thank me here and there, but don't like me. I don't want you like me. Because if you hate me, now you freaking business. I don't care if you hate me. But I don't want you to like me either. I get a lot of followers. I don't tell them for like me. I don't want them to like me. I want them to just make sure say I'm doing the right thing and standing on the right side of history. That is all I want. Let we all stand on the right, right side of history. Tomorrow, tomorrow, what will go for say? A country's democracy is, is dead. We have to restore democracy, and this is the time. And that is why we appreciate Ambassador David Reimer. We appreciate everybody with a right and say the elections in Sierra Leone at this particular point in time is not, uh, 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 you know, uh, the, the, the reflect the results of the, the, the will of the people. The election does not reflect the will of the people. And we, until we get the will of the people sitting in that state house, we're not going to relent. That is, the, 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 that is what we should be thinking about. But at the same time, we're not going to allow rogue individuals them for come and deceive and lie to Sierra Leoneans. Anybody where they go tell and say, I contribute to our money for logo na ECOWAS court, for logo na Africa Union court, for logo, we will not contribute today. These useless ones were the ones that were actually supporting opposition figures them for make sure say they don't hold the SLPP accountable. They like it today, una innocently want to contribute to our money, they don't sweat and work for that part of the world, this part of the world, for go give them, let them go destroy our phone. Don't be part of that nonsense. But the fact of the matter is, we are calling on all the ECOWAS, we are calling on African Union, we're calling on the European Union again, we're calling on uh, the American you know, State Department. We want President Biot to step aside. Because as of this moment, democracy has no value. The people of Sierra Leone don't trust democracy anymore. They don't trust anything, they don't trust the process, and we have to restore the dignity of democracy in Sierra Leone. That should be our goal. That is what I want to talk to you guys about. We cannot look at what is happening now and not look at what happened in five years. All right? That is what I want you guys to think about and reflect on that. We get a responsibility for preserving democracy, not only during elections, but before elections. Elections are rigged before Elections Day. We always the cities. My brother, Gary Kota, would always be saying this stuff like this. Elections are rigged before the day of elections. We see what happened. The registration process was flop. We saw it. Public Elections Act. We saw it. All kind of laws, they pass. The PR system, they pass. Then I can see that we see how these guys, they lost their seat, they're all in the parliament. The SLPP get over 80 something seats. All because of corruption. All because these guys have sold their souls to this SLPP government. We cannot allow this to happen. We, the people, get the responsibility to stand up and protect this democracy. That is what I want to talk to you guys about. All right? But we have a responsibility. Let's check ourselves. Let, ask, let we ask, what is the fate of democracy? Democracy has no confidence anymore in Sierra Leone. I doubt if this, if this thing stands, the next elections, uh, I, I doubt if people will want to even go out there to vote. If this nonsense will happen so today, if it stands. And that is why we should not let it stand. Under no circumstances, we should not let it stand. Because if it stands, it has eroded democracy forever. It has eroded democracy forever. But I'm telling you this, guys. Moving forward in Sierra Leone, hold opposition figures accountable. Even if SLPP comes out of power and SLPP goes into opposition, I'm telling you guys, hold them. And, and that's the thing with the SLPP, when they were in opposition, they were very stern. Marabio even be the right letter to former President Kuruma. But to this day, I don't see President Kuruma write letter to Marabio for challenger on the issues. You know, this is the problem what we get in Africa. The people that are supposed to stand up and defend and protect us, they're not doing their jobs. They, they're not doing it. They just left the people to themselves. The people that get leadership. Sierra Leoneans are very... Sierra Leoneans are ready na leadership no day. Sierra Leoneans are ready to protect the democracy. What we lack is leadership. Sierra Leoneans are very resilient people. I'm proud of Sierra Leoneans. But what we lack is leadership. And the one that we're in the opposition with for protect we... They are just as useless. They have no good. For five years, we watch this foolishness to go on. Then tell we, European Union, tell we, say they don't trust the ECSL, they don't trust the police, they don't trust the judiciary anymore. They say the people don't get no confidence. They go out and sit them, but they're just watching, they call it. They allow this guy for kill with people, like massacre with citizens. Then. They get away with them. Now, election, the man go thief. Why if you say the man thief, the elections were a thief as well? Why if you say thief? Like I see, fans so delicate today. 
So these are the things we're saying, guys. What is the fate of our democracy? Would I get trust in this democracy anymore in Sierra Leone? Will the people participate anymore in future elections? And the only way we can bring that confidence back is to ensure this does not stand. So kudos to American, uh, Ambassador David Reimer, kudos to the State Department. But you guys should go further, you know, should go further into this and say, he should step down. Marabi is not the president. He should not be recognized like you've not recognized him as the president. He should step aside. Let us have an interim government that is going to run the affairs of Sierra Leone until we have the proper elections result. It is sad. It is sad. Our people continue to suffer as they are right now. No confidence. What are you going to say, Leon? For the next five years, if these guys sit around, nothing is going to happen. No, no investor is going to come today. No development is going to take place. Who is going to suffer? The poor people. They will still continue to collect taxes. They will continue to drive big motor cars. They continue to chief the small resources within the country. And the people continue to suffer. To suffer. So, guys, let us ask ourselves this question. What is the fate of democracy in Sierra Leone? It is very crucial. It's very important to ask these questions. All right? I'm going to leave it here. This live cannot get disrupted today for some reason. I, I may cannot like, use my iPhone while I do live because iPhones are just very, conf you know, very temperamental. I would have used my Android. But anyways, thank you guys. Share the live and we'll take it from there. But what is the fate of our democracy in Sierra Leone? Where is the confidence? Is there any more confidence in democracy in Sierra Leone? Do the people trust it? Huh? We work for, uh, look at my brother, Asheku Kudabo. You're, you're correct. Even some of us that are in diaspora, we want to be able to go back home, but go back to electricity, go back to clean drinking water, go back to proper health care, go back to good roads. That is all we're asking for. We're not asking for much. But these guys want to stay in power at all costs. But they're not doing anything to improve the lives of our people, improve the, the, the face of Sierra Leone. They're not doing anything to do that. Then they want for TIFU elections. They want people to go vote. They say, no, your votes don't matter. We're not going to tolerate that. We're not going to accept them anymore. And this should not stand. We're calling for an interim government, okay? We're calling for this guy to step aside. Madabio should step aside. Everything should stop. you're not coming now to see what is actually happening. Anyways, I'll leave it here, guys. Bye-bye.